Hi, this, this video is going to be about printing your rubber printing plate. Okay, remember we call this a printing plate. And so what I've done is I've got my ink, or really it's just acrylic paint, and I've got a brayer, which is just a rubber roller. Um, if you have a roller that's for varnishing or um, woodworking products, that would work great for this. I wouldn't use a ruler with fuzz on it at all because the fuzz will probably go in the cracks on this and that's not what we want. I would recommend if you don't have a brayer like this to go ahead and use a paintbrush and just paint the paint right on your lines that you want to print. Okay, just be real careful about it. Try not to get it in the spaces. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my brayer inked up. Remember when we do this we want ink all the way around and you can see if I hold this up here there are some empty spots that aren't shiny. That means those don't have enough ink on it. Okay so we want to make sure that we're getting enough ink on here. Tin foil works awesome for this. We use it in the classroom. Um, if you don't have tin foil, newspaper works great also to put paint or ink on to do this. And the difference between ink and paint is not a big difference. Um, ink is thicker. Um, if you have paint that's too runny, it might not work as well for this. It's better to have paint that's a little bit thicker. So you might want to leave it out for a little bit and let it dry a little before you put it on. See if that thickens it up just a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and roll this on here. And then I can go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to put it right on there and I'm going to press down as hard as I can. Okay, so I'm going to press on that and there's my picture. Okay, so you can make as many copies as you want for this because there's all kinds of cool things that you can do with this. That's the neat thing about printing is that you can make as many copies as you want with this. You could also put the paper right on top and press it that way. Okay. Remember it ends up reverse. So when you're doing this, it's a good idea not to use words because they'll end up backwards and that's not what we want. But when you do this, the cool thing is once you get some of these printed, and they're dry, then you can add other materials to them. You could add chalk to it and color it in. You could use um, acrylic paint and paint it. You could use watercolor, but if you use watercolor, you need to be really careful about not getting too close to the edge because if you get too close to the edge with watercolor what will happen is this black of the the paint will bleed into there. If you use um, ink that is not um, water soluble that wouldn't happen but that doesn't wash out so easily so we don't usually use that. Um, we usually use this and then just be really careful when we get to the edge or um, don't use a wet media. If you're, if you're nervous about that happening. You can use color pencils, you can use markers, you can use chalk pastels, you could use oil pastels, you could use crayons. All of those would work perfectly with this. So you can color it in and add your color um, to it that way. You could also, if you wanted to, print on construction paper and then you have color prints um, that have a color on the background and with the black ink on top and then they already have color added to them. Okay, so there's all different kinds of things that you can do with this. Um, so you could use a wood block. We also use this type of printing method when we talk about pop art with Andy Warhol. And we talk about some of the prints that he does and um, using colored paper and paint and all of those things to add color to it in the background this way. So there's all different kinds of things that you can do with printmaking. So try this out, experiment, and have fun with it.